Hello and welcome to my demo of the initial release for Geotech Ninja. This is going to be for version 0.5. And let's jump into everything. So while this is installing, so Pilgrim's distributed GPR version 3, it's open source, everyone can check the source code. Um, it will also install Edge WebView 2, which is required for the maps to operate. You will see it cropping up in the background just now. If you cancel out from this one, the app's not going to work. Um, also, as an FYI, I know this is in the readme, but I also know that no one reads the readme. I'm not the guy who wrote GeoSetter. I don't have access to the source code. And so please, 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 which you're going to don't talk me about that one. With that in mind, GeoSetter used to run an Internet Explorer, Window, and Google Maps API, which are now outdated, so we're not doing any of that. Let's have a look at what this does. So it will default into your pictures, and why not? NASA's headquarters. I figure that looks a bit better than anything silly political. What you will need is an API key for ArtGIS and a username and a password for GeoNames. And the reason for that, the parent is needed for search and the letter is needed for toponymy. And by default, it's not here, obviously. I don't know your details. Uh, so you will need to just fill it in for yourself. There are links where you can register. Uh, please fill them in. Otherwise, the app is going to have very limited functionality. So once that's all done, click OK. And let's have a go at this thing. I'll point out a few things as we go along. I have a few pictures to play with in my temp. And one of the things you'll notice is that A, this has Chinese character names in it, and B, you're getting a notification about non-standard parts that's on purpose without being horrendously technical. And again, uh, GeoSetter used to use something else, uh, DC0, I think, to deal with the files. There's nothing particularly wrong with it, but it functionali its functionality is a bit limited. So I decided to use Exif tool because I think that's one of the best things out there. Um, however, Exif tool is a little sensitive when it comes to any files that contain pretty much non-English characters. So it doesn't have to be Chinese. It could be Central European, and I'll demonstrate that in a bit. So this is just to say that with these files, it's going to be a bit slower. DLDR, I've coded a branch with, uh, in, in the code, which is to say for anything kind of standard, do it one way, which is fast, and for anything that's non-standard, do it a different way, which is slow. Apologies, nothing I can do about that. So probably click cancel, otherwise you'll keep being notified about this. So it works, just um, works a bit slower. So, you know, we have the nine files and no, uh, 11 files, none of them have your data. So how does this work? I'll demo a few things. So this one, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the portrait landscape thing, I, there's not much I can do about that. I haven't figured out how to deal with it. So, sorry, it's version 0.5. But for example, in the JPEG, <laughs> it works. So in the, in the DNG, it doesn't. Okay, um, let's start with, this one has um, coordinates, but no tags, which is actually true. Um, so, you know, if you point at any particular spot, you can just basically say location to file. At this point, you probably want to click yes, otherwise you'll end up only pulling the location coordinates, but nothing else. This way it syncs. So that now synced. Also, one of the things the app does on purpose is that it saves in an internal database every coordinate you click on. And essentially, if you have to query that coordinate pair again, then it will 
read the data from the local database rather than having to query the API each and every time. That saves an awful lot of time and your API keys won't get abused too much either. Okay, so now it's marked red because there is something to write. So how can you write? Well, you can click on this one. I know the label doesn't work. don't know why. It works here. It doesn't work there. And it doesn't work there either. So done. Okay, it just says ready. It doesn't really give proper feedback. Every so often you might see something like one image file created. That is more often when you use raw files. So for example, this one, technically this is in London. I know it sent Olive's house. I don't know if we can find it. House London. Uh, not really. <laughs> yeah, well the search is what it is. Uh, it's in two list street though. London. Okay, let's turn that one. So see it works. You say location to file, yes, and you'll kind of just have to believe it that it oh and zoom is just a limitation of um open street map, so please don't ask if we can zoom in more. We can't zoom in more. This is how far it goes. Okay, so speaking of creating extra files, if I save this, press Ctrl S now it will say one file has been created so the reason for this this is a pdf and if we go into settings file options pefs are defaulted to create sidecar xmp um the app doesn't really throw errors i mean errors it does though when you have an error but it doesn't throw messages this is an exception i might disable it later i might add an option to disable it later so how can you edit stuff? Well, one hand, you can do the clicky stuff, which you've already seen, or you can double click on the file and you can, uh, functionality is generally identical for from, from um, Geosetta and you'll notice the only thing we have is location. I haven't coded anything else. So let's demonstrate this in a little more detail. So let's pick three different types of files and again you can do control enter so if you do get from web here it will pull for the active file the altitude if you click get from web here for the active file it will get location data if you pull if you do get all from web then this is for all the files you have uh, altitude and here location data so let's do that data updated that is old because it has changed and generally speaking it works one of the things is that if you use these buttons anything that's overwritten it will just get marked as overwritten even if it's identical um it's kind of a bug but i haven't particularly bothered with it it's so low priority so you know Functionality, if you cancel out, nothing happens. Obviously, you've lost that bit of information, so continue it again. Get all from web, data updated, and actually, this now queried the local file, not the API. You, you haven't seen any sign of it, but I know for a fact that these coordinates now sit in your SQLite database. So, again, uh, control, uh, control save, save, ready. Good. I want to point out a few things here. Uh, this actually supports CR3, more or less. Um, so this will throw half an error. <laughs> Go away, Windows. If I point at anywhere, it doesn't matter. Location to file, yes. And I'm just going to save. This will give you two warnings. One, an XMP file has been created, fine. And that's short CTMD. Uh, this is a thing either with EXIF tool or with the CR3, I don't know. I've read about this, it exists, it's a problem. Um, it's not the app's problem per se, but you know, if you refresh the folder, data's there. So, yay. Okay, let's have a look at copy paste. 
So it's a bunch of old Scotland pictures from a long time ago. And yeah. Anyway, I'm kind of just demonstrating it functions, but let's do something. I don't know if this was in Edinburgh or not, but um, maybe not. Edinburgh, if I could type. And let's do that one. So let's do a location to file. And once we've done that, you can actually do copy. And you can use the keyboard shortcuts. And you can do paste. And you'll notice the files haven't been saved yet, because still more is there. Um so basically we have a copy paste functionality. When you paste, it pastes everything that's geolocation. At the moment, there's no way to select individual things at some point that is likely to change. Um, so you can save. Also, one of the things you can do is just abandon the folder, at which point it will ask, do you want to save? And I'm missing half parentheses, but generally speaking, you do want to save. So it then goes on saving and then moves folders. Then it leads stuff back in, so yay. Okay, uh, so generally this kind of works with Chinese and or other characters. You know, just save, control S, and it works. One thing I want to point out is that if I create a folder that has go away, that's what I get for a new virtual machine. Let's say temp, silly characters, way. Okay, that will do. I don't actually quite care what it does or what it says. It's just to demonstrate that users can do weird things. And if I do this and move it works but even if we save it's probably going to work so yay for that we're in uk control s save refresh works now one thing i want to show because this will probably come up for people if you have issues with um its own goes about files not existing even though they obviously do in Windows 10 and 11, you have region settings. And, okay, in 10, it's up here. In 11, it basically is called more or less the same thing. But uh, I will point out a feature here. So, change stuff. In 11, you just have to find administrative. Change locale and check this. For me, it's unchecked. I don't need it. Uh, but do check this if you have issues. That should solve your problem. You'll have to start the computer first. So, yay. Okay. Um, I don't really want to waste any more of your time. The app works. So, yeah. Um, you know, this is version 0.5. This is probably the one that's going to go on GitHub. There's a website which is not done yet, and if you feel like donating, please do. Also, community, please feel free to just, you know, make changes to the code. It's open source. And uh, bug reports, on purpose, I don't leave an email address here. Do your bug reports, please, on GitHub. Uh, that makes my life a lot easier. Yes. Uh, any questions? Shout GitHub, please. And enjoy the app. Um, feature request also GitHub, please. I will happily add new functionality as I can. Thank you.